I might get thrown out of the state of Maryland for even mentioning this, but I'm going to mention it. But I'm going on the record right now saying I do not ever recommend somebody plant Johnson grass. But so, sometimes the good Lord gives you lemons and, and you got to make lemonade out of it. And, um, and, and I, I like to call it perennial sudex in, instead of Johnson grass. It is a sorghum species. Um, and it spreads both by by seeds and also by tillage through through rhizomes getting stuck on tillage equipment moving from one field to another. Commonly find on old dairies. I mean, it's almost impossible to find an old dairy that doesn't have some Johnson grass on it somewhere. Uh, thrives under hay management. So when we start to cut cut hay, we'll actually increase that Johnson grass. Johnson grass likes defoliation and then rest between raising events. And and uh, when I was in Virginia, I worked with the prison system a lot. Uh, unbeknownst to most people, the prison system in Virginia had the largest cow herd in Virginia. And we worked in the south side of Virginia with one of the prison farms, and um, their, their hay fields had just become inundated with Johnson grass for, for these, that exact reason, it just likes that type of management. And so, um, so they had to make a choice. They, the choice was is that we really go into a row crop and try to eradicate that Johnson grass which they could do with our Roundup Ready technology of soybeans and corn now. But, but the question is, is, will it stay Johnson grass free? And the answer is probably no. It's going to really knock the Johnson grass stand back, but it's probably going to come back over time as we go back into the, the hay type management. Um, or we, we could just start to manage those fields for a summer hay crop, and that's kind of what they chose to do. And so they started to fertilize for that Johnson grass. They started to really cut it aggressively in the in the summertime at the right growth stage, and and it really produced a lot of pretty high quality hay in that system when it was managed. Now, again, I wouldn't recommend people plant it, but but it's kind of utilizing something that that you might already have on your farm. Where we don't find Johnson grasses in continuously stocked pastures. Yep. <laughs> Tend to increase it in pastures under rotational stocking because you're you're defoliating it, then you're resting it, and and that's that's one of the frustrating things for people that don't want Johnson grass and they start to graze those pastures rotationally. We tend to increase Johnson grass presence in those pastures uh, during the summer months. So yeah, that can be an issue where we don't find is in continuously stocked pastures. So where we we're grazing pastures really hard. The first thing animals tend to go to in a pasture is Johnson grass. Very palatable, and, and they tend to graze it out in a continuous grazing system. So again, response to nitrogen, good good if we manage for forage quality, harvested it, and that means we harvested the boot stage. Um, can have prussic acid. Prussic acid is formed uh, under severe drought stress, but, but most of the time, the biggest danger of prussic acid formation, which can cause poisoning in livestock, is at first frost. And that's when we just need to get animals off those pastures. So when those cells rupture, they release the precursors uh, for prussic acid formation. And um, those plants can be very toxic for several days after a frost. And uh, generally, we tell people to leave animals off of those pastures until those leaves that have um, got frosted dry out. And uh, generally, you're safe after about a week or so. Uh, this I just threw this in because it's kind of interesting. This is from the Noble Foundation in Oklahoma, and they rated the nutritive value of different warm season grasses. And look what's on the top of the list: Johnson grass. So, so that's kind of kind of interesting. Forage quality can actually be pretty good with with Johnson grass. <clears throat> 